Hello everybody, welcome back to the Remnant Christian Book Reading Channel. My name is Vincent, and today we're going to be reading chapter 9 of the third part of the Elijah Project. Welcome back to the channel if I haven't already said it, which I'm pretty sure I did. Um, today we're going to go ahead and do chapter 9 like I said, and that is all. Today's going to be a short video. Unfortunately, I know. Cue the sad size. But, next video I do, God willing, is going to be a little mini marathon of at least three chapters. So, sounds like it's going to be fun. With that being said, let's go ahead and recap what happened last. So, in the last chapter, we left off with Willard hitting the ground in a dark cave and also Elijah was taken by the shadow man so with that being said also I have to ask you all to in the comments please let me know if the sound is better this time or if it's the same I tried to do a little something something to make it sound a little better a little louder without um, damaging anyone's ears um, but yeah Let's go ahead and start it, excuse me, sorry. Let's go ahead and start the the reading. Chapter 9 is titled, Darkness Tightens Its Grip. <laughs> I hope you all are ready, because I certainly am. Let's get into it. Willard! Cody dropped to his knees and knelt over his friend. Willard, wake up! He reached down and slapped his face. Willard's eyes popped open. Ow! He immediately slapped Cody back. Zack had left their side to check on Piper. You okay? Yeah, she said in a shaky voice. Thanks for finding me. Where are Mom and Dad? They're next on our list. Zack said as he helped her to her feet. But she barely, or excuse me, but she had barely stood before she felt it. Whoa, what's that? The guys exchanged glances. What's what? Zack asked. Pepper frowned. I don't know, it's like... She wanted to say it was like a giant wave of selfishness. Excuse me, I can't say that word. Selfishness had washed over her. That suddenly, the only thing she cared about was for what was best for her. But admitting that was far too embarrassing, especially in front of Cody. So instead of answering, she simply shrugged. I'm, I'm not sure. Cody nervously cleared his throat. <clears throat> Actually, we're all feeling things. Willard added, And the further we proceed into this cave, the stronger those emotions become. Pepper gave a shudder. The selfish part of her wanted to run away, to let the others find her parents, to let them save her little brother. She had her own life to live, why should she care? But she fought against the feelings, refusing to give in. So, uh, which way? Cody asked. That's an ignorant question, Willard snapped. We press on, of course. The rudeness surprised Piper. That wasn't like Willard at all. He continued. We are already aware of what is behind us. We are unaware of what lies ahead. Without waiting for the others to agree, he started forward. I'm, I'm not so sure that's a good idea, Cody said. His voice sounded unsure, almost like he was afraid. Why not? Willard demanded. Because... Cody glanced from side to side, uh, because Willard rolled his eyes. Out with it! We don't have one the entire day. Piper came to his rescue. 
Because we should pray first. Now, it was Zack's turn to show contempt. Oh, brother. Piper turned to him in surprise. Zack had never felt that way about prayer before. <sighs> if you want to go hang back, or excuse me, let me read that again. If you want to hang back and get all religious on us, go ahead, Zack scorned. But the rest of us are going. Get all religious, Piper frowned. Zack, what's wrong? Will you please seize this mindless communication? Willard ordered. We will proceed and we will proceed now. Piper turned from Zack to Willard, equally as surprised. Before she could answer, Willard shook his head in contempt and started off. Zack followed, but Cody glanced nervously around, refusing to move. Let's go, Cody, Zack called over his shoulder. I, uh, <clears throat> Cody coughed. I, I, I think I'll stay behind, you know, to protect Piper and all. But it was a lie. Piper could see it in his eyes. If anything, it was the other way around. He was hoping she would protect him. How strange. She'd always known Cody to be brave and courageous. What was going on now? It was time to report to Shadow Man. Monica was grateful her cell phone didn't work underground. She was even more grateful that she had to leave the caves to call in her report. It's not that she didn't like the caves. She was just terrified by them. Or at least where they led to. Actually, not where they led to, but who they led to. By the time they caught the elevator and went back upstairs, they were all pretty jittery. Of course, Bruno was the worst. The big lug was shaking hard. Are we there yet? Yes, Bruno, Silas sighed. You can open your eyes now. Great. Can I go to the bathroom? As soon as I call Shadow Man, Monica punched in his number on her phone. He's still in the Hummer with the kid, and with any luck, he's still in a good mood. Silas frowned. I didn't know he had such good mood. Don't be ridiculous, Monica snapped. Of course he has good moods. Really? Silas asked. Like when? <sighs> Remember that day there was a big earthquake in California and a major hurricane in Florida and all those tornadoes in Kansas and when that giant typhoon hit Asia? Silas nodded. You're right. I think he might have actually smiled that day. Well, at least a smirk. Finally, the phone on the other end picked up and a voice demanded, Speak to me. Uh, uh, I'm sorry t to disturb you, sir. Monica stammered. Your very presence disturbed. Yes, well, thank you. I, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I mean... Silence! Monica gave a nervous swallow. Come to think of it, so did Silence and Bruno. Have you found them? The voice demanded. It's just as you su suspected, Monica said. They've returned to the compound in search of the boy. They found the elevator and are heading down into the abyss. Abyss. She could almost hear him smiling on the other end. Excellent. The master will deal with them swiftly. Monica gave a sigh of relief. Um, th then you won't be needing us to go down there, will you, sir? The three smiled anxiously at each other, giving a confident thumbs up over a job well done until Shadow Man answered, You must return and retrieve the bodies. 
but... Go! The command blasted through the phone with such force that the speaker crackled. Their smiles wilted as Monka stared at her phone. Well, I guess we have our orders. We're not going back down there, Bruno said. Of course we are, she scolded. As soon as you go to the bathroom, we're heading into the abyss. Uh, actually, Silas coughed slightly. <coughs> the bathroom part won't be necessary. Why not? Monica demanded. Instead of answering, he nodded at the glowing puddle at Bruno's feet. Mom and Dad wandered through one tunnel after another, shouting, Piper! Zack! But there was no answer, just their returning echoes. We'll never find them, Mom said, doing her best to hide the trembling in her voice. But Dad heard it. He put his arm around her and said, We will, dear. I promise you, we will. First we lose Elijah, she sniffled. Now Piper and Zack. We'll find them, he said. God has not taken us this far to abandon us now. We'll find them. She looked down and then nodded. Dad gave her another hug and once again they started calling. Piper! Zack! Zack and Willard followed the cave deeper and deeper. Willard had demanded that he take the lead, and the further they went, the bossier he got. Things were even worse for Zack. It was as if all his faith was being sucked away. And the deeper they went, the worse it got. Until he no longer trusted God for anything. Finally, Unable to help himself, he blurted out, We're gonna die and I know it! Willard glanced over his shoulder and sneered, Ugh, What? God left us here and we're all gonna die. Shut your trap, Dawkins! But Zack couldn't stop. Left us here? What am I saying? I'm not even sure he exists! Who? What are you talking about? God! I don't know what's happening, but... Look, I'm in control here, Willard barked. Not God. But Willard spun around, raising his flashlight over his head. You shut up or it's going to be lights out for you. Got it. Even though she was far away, Piper heard the sound of Willard's shouting echoing through the cave. Cody... She turned to see him huddled against the side wall, wide-eyed and frightened. Something's going on here. Our thoughts, our, our feelings, they're getting out of control. Cody nodded. And it's getting worse. She paused, listening to the shouting. Especially for Zack and Willard. What can we do? Cody's voice was shaking. For the briefest second, Piper wanted to throw up her hands and tell him to forget it. What did she care? Let them fight their own battles. The same with the little Elijah. Then, suddenly, out of the blue, she remembered what Dad had said in the car. We're in a battle. A spiritual battle. And she vividly remembered one of the weapons they were, use, were to use in that battle. Cody, she moved toward him. There is something we can do. He looked to her, waiting for more. We can pray. What? We're not fighting against anything we can see. We're fighting something spiritual. And the only way we can win a spiritual battle is to fight it spiritually. His eyes were as wide or were wide as he looked at her. How do we do that? She kneeled down. Take my hand. Let's start praying hard 
real hard. Still, holding the flashlight, Willard shouted into the Zack's face, Now get in front of me so I can keep an eye on you. What's wrong with us? Zack asked. I don't understand what's happening now. Of course, Zack could easily have taken Willard with one hand tied behind his back. But make that, or actually make that two hands. Make that two hands and one foot. But he was worried about the guy. And since God could no longer be trusted to help, it was up to him to do whatever he could. Reluctantly, he took the lead, his faith fading with every step he took. Together, the boys plunged deeper and deeper into the cave, until suddenly, they ran out of steps. Without warning, the path fell out from under their feet, and the boys tumbled down into darkness. But this wasn't, but this fall wasn't like before. When they had all fallen into the elevator. No, this fall seemed to go on. Ah! Forever. And that is the end of chapter nine. Oof, I hope you all are ready for chapter 10. Thank you so much for spending your time and watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much again for always watching with me always commenting, always giving your likes and support. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Thank you so much. And until next time, remember, Jesus loves you. And remember that the, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. God bless you. And remember to fight the good fight. Bye-bye.